Hi students, um, I wanted to give you a little bit of background information just so that when we go to write our code in MATLAB, um, we have a better idea of what it is we're actually doing on the software and hardware level. So um, I'm going to start by introducing some um, languages. So as far as programming languages go, there are high-level languages and low-level languages, and MATLAB is actually um, a high-level language. So high-level languages, um, abbreviated HLL. Um, some examples are Java, C++, um, Fortran, and Python and MATLAB. So this course is in MATLAB. Um, another really popular choice is Python. Um, the reason why um, we're going to use MATLAB is because it's actually a really good prototyping language. So that means that if you are developing a computer program, um, there's a lot of built-in tools that are built into MATLAB for you, so you don't have to write them yourself. Whereas if we were to um, maybe write a program in C or some of like the faster scripting languages, um, for those ones you have to write all of the tools yourself that you need. Um, so there's nothing that there's uh, that's like done for you. Um, MATLAB it's fast. It has a nice um, environment where it's interactive, so you can tell MATLAB to do something. It'll do it and it'll spit out the answer immediately. So you don't have to. Um, recompile your program every time um, to run it and see the results if you make a modification. So um, the, the MATLAB is considered a high level language because um, it kind of more resembles the English language. Okay, so it's more English-like, it's easier for programmers to understand. Um, a low level language would be something like um, assembly, um, it's actually like a language that the computer understands. So um, there's a linker between these. So the high level um, program is it's fed into a compiler. And what the compiler is going to do, um, the compiler is actually a program and it converts this high level language program into um, a different language that is more low level that the computer will understand. And um, it's called assembly, assembly language, or sometimes machine language. And then um, when our program is in assembly, now it can actually be understood by the computer, so the hardware. So this is software, right? This is the program that we write um, with English words, it's compiled into a code that is um, understood by the hardware. Okay, so the hardware is the actual um, device of the computer. Okay, so the hardware consists of, um, we have a, a CPU and memory, and these things are uh, composed of digital circuits. Okay, and these digital circuits, these are logic gates. Here's the symbol of some logic gates, kind of like this. And um, there's millions of these that are burned actually on a computer chip. And this is on a motherboard in your computer, okay? So um, these, the memory of your computer um, can actually store quite a lot of information, but the limitation is it only has one tool that it can store information with, and that is basically a power switch. So if the switch is on, then a small voltage is applied to these digital circuits, and that'd be something like a one volt signal or a five volt signal. And when the switch is off, then um, a low voltage of zero voltage would be applied. So basically we have two states. We have, um, state one and we have state zero, right? So the state one is also referred to as the um, high state. The high state is when we apply a voltage 
Um, it's also referred to as logical, true, or one. Um, the, the low state, this is when no voltage, or I should say about a zero voltage is applied. And this is um, logical false or zero. Okay, so this would be like um, um, a circuit line is on and this would be a circuit line is off. Okay, so if we have basically um, two states, um, you can kind of think of it as the language of computers only has two words. It has on and off, zero volts or five volts. That means that we have to figure out a way to store all the information about everything with just a zero and a one, right? Just with an on and an off. Um, so that's where the binary number system comes into play. So in binary, we can encode um, numbers. We can encode positive, negative numbers, floating point numbers, which means um, has a decimal point. Um, we can also encode characters and sentences. And um, once we take all this information that you and I understand in the English language and put it into computer language in the forms of zeros and ones, like long strings of zeros and ones, then we can actually operate on that. So um, MATLAB is going to kind of do, um, it's going to interact with us on a higher level, right? So it's going to like, we're gonna speak back and forth to it in English. So we don't have to do a lot of the manipulation on the bit level, but it's still um, helpful to understand what's happening in memory so that when we go to create variables and fill them with values, we um, make sure that we pick the correct type of variable, okay? So um, in the next video, I'll talk to you a little bit about the binary number system and a little bit more how memory allocation um, takes place. And let me know if you have any questions.